Okay. Uh, next up, very happy to introduce Michael Wilson, Senior Sales Engineer at Strong DM. Michael, thank you so much for being here with us today. The floor is all yours. All right, uh, I'm excited to be here at today's EcoCast to talk about the importance of protecting identities, uh, especially as more and more employees across organizations need access to critical systems just to do their jobs. My name is Michael Wilson, and I'm a senior sales engineer here at StrongDM. And I wanted to connect with you, our audience, to share insights on the critical role identity plays in access management. Also, I, I want to address how to prepare for tomorrow's employees, tomorrow's infrastructure, and tomorrow's emerging security needs. Once upon a time, infrastructure and the way it was accessed was simple. You would have an Oracle database sitting next to you in the office, and systems were only available on the office network. Uh, then came the data centers and co-location facilities where you could rent large spaces that were ready for massive amounts of power and connectivity, but they were always in inconvenient places. This meant that remote access became a critical capability, and your team had to remotely connect in and fix potential issues because getting stuck in traffic to do it locally was not an option. Then came the cloud and infrastructure evolved to include multiple protocols, layers of networking, permissioning, credentials, containers, and container management, and even multiple clouds on top of data centers, and even those desk side servers that we just talked about. To make matters worse, headquarters have vanished and the simple to secure infrastructure vanished with it. Centralized IT has been replaced by a decentralized workforce with employees everywhere. These days, more and more people need access to do their jobs. The definition of a technical employee is evolving, People need access to more resources and more data, data that is stored in more places across a fluid infrastructure simply to do their jobs. The rise of the technical employee is upon us. These employees are using data and technology every day and require access to sensitive information and systems to get their jobs done. The volume of employees that now fall into this category is increasing exponentially as well. We aren't just talking about ensuring secure point in time access for engineers and developers, but enabling data scientists, product managers, marketers, salespeople, and more. In order to compete in the digital age, modern organizations are adopting a more flexible IT infrastructure strategy, one that includes more resources, more tools, more data, more servers, as well as more web apps and more integrations, more of everything. This is the era of the limitless stack. It has no boundaries. It's ephemeral, it is shape-shifting, and will continue to evolve. Legacy access management solutions were not designed to keep up with all these users in all these places. They also never contemplated the complexity and elasticity of today's modern environments. Increasingly complex stacks, off limits networks and ephemeral servers, this tangle of resources is difficult for anyone to map or even see clearly. Layer onto that the need to keep it all secure and compliant. How could you possibly manage and enable secure access to all these resources for all the people who need it? This is where I can say that with the rise of the technical employee, we should be putting our people first and devise ways which are easy, fast, and secure for all those people to gain access to what they need without causing administrative headaches, loss of productivity, and opening the door for these people to create vulnerabilities within our already complex infrastructure. Let's think about a traditional security solution, VPNs. VPNs overcomplicate the relationship between people and systems by making your users think about where they are and where the resource they need is located. This has two distinct problems. This makes all your employees become network topology experts, which is totally unnecessary in this day and age. And VPNs introduce latency and protocol challenges for certain work streams, increasing support loads on IT and, and frustrating your technical employees. Managing access to these dynamics, dynamic environments is a nightmare for many organizations. We asked a few hundred DevOps and security teams to talk about managing access in the current workplace. 93% of organizations have technical staff that has access to sensitive infrastructure. 65% of teams are using shared logins with access to cloud providers being one of the biggest challenges facing those organizations. If you ask any modern legal or security team how they feel about this practice, this is a huge liability for business. It is important for businesses to prioritize how to keep all their employees' digital ident identities secure and protect their brand from reputational damage which can result from a breach. We know that compromised identities caused by weak or stolen credentials are a growing threat to organizations. A centralized view will allow organizations to understand exactly who has access to what, when, and where. Access management solutions help organizations meet the security and compliance requirements for regulations like SOC 2 by verifying controls that are put in place. 
With things like role-based access control, you can significantly reduce the cost of compliance while, cr while creating a more consistent and auditable process. Managing credentials, requesting and approving access can all be determined by a common policy. By giving users timely access to the resources they need, you can enable productivity and prevent the loss of time, money, and frankly, your most valuable and important resource, your people. What if an access management solution was built around the needs of people first? What if it was easy to use, designed to be secure by default, and auditable? StrongDM is proud to introduce a radical new approach to the modern tech stack. We call it People First Access. It rethinks access around the people who need it, making it incredibly simple and easy to use while ensuring total security and compliance. IT, InfoSec, and administrators need to have precise control over what each user has access to without the controls getting in the way of productivity. With least privilege access by default, you can ensure the right permissions every time. Adding permission for teams mem team members can be done on demand for any resource. You no longer need to worry about shared credentials, Keys and credentials are completely hidden from end users who no longer need to have them in order to gain access. This reduces the overall risk of keys ever being exposed. With total visibility into everything that's ever happened in your stack, security and compliance teams can easily answer who did what, when, and where. What is StrongDM? What does this look like? Strong, StrongDM grants you access based on who you are. Employees don't have to know where a resource is located in the environment or the credentials for that specific resource. They just have to be themselves. StrongDM truly takes a people-first focus when it comes to both admin and user experience. At the beginning of the day, we log into the StrongDM client that's on our desktop. And then once authenticated through our single sign-on provider of choice, in this case, it happens to be Okta. And I'm gonna do a little MFA magic here in the background on my phone. Yes, it's me. And I press the magic number. Authentication is complete. And I can instantly see everything that I have access to via the StrongDM client in a user-friendly way. At this point, I can easily connect to those resources needed to do my job. A simple click on the UI and the connection to the resources initiated. It's, which is indicated by the little green lightning bolt right here, right? So in this case, in particular, my role is assigned through the identity provider. So let's remove my role from Okta. Find myself here. And I'm just gonna remove, remove myself from this Okta engineering group. And now I no longer have access to any resources. This is a way to enable zero standing permissions. And I wanna walk you through how to make a request directly through Slack. And this is also available in Microsoft Teams. If I go to Slack here, I can go all the available resources easily. And I wanna, I wanna actually have access to this prod SSH Amazon 2. And I get there by saying access to the resource name. Now, ordinarily, you wouldn't have admins uh, requesting access to things, but in this case, I am an admin and I'm just going to type yes. And this magic number here. Now I have access to this resource uh, for 60 minutes by default. This can be also configured. Um, so, and you can see here in the client that I have access to this resource. So think about how you could use this for limiting access to your production environments. Now, if I wanna use this resource, all I have to do is type in a substring of the resource name, which is actually available here. I don't even have to type out the whole resource name. I don't have to know where this resource is. I don't have to provide any credentials, password, keys, or anything like that I'm in the resource. I can do top, I can kind of see, you know, what's going on here. Uh, and if I want to fix something, this is what we do. Now my job is done. I'm going to uh, exit out of there. And let's take a look at, now that that's done, how easy it is 
to revoke that access once I've finished with that job. Again, picking on me. Here's temporary access. I revoked that access just like that, and now it's gone. So just a, a quick walk through. You don't have to do all this through Slack and Okta. If you want, you can do this quite easily in uh, StrongDM. Here are a number of roles. And going back to my user here, I can go to roles, say uh, you're onboarding me as a new sales engineer. All you got to do is add me to that group. And I have access now to all of the resources that would normally be available to sales engineers. And say I move on to another role. You can just remove me here and that access is immediately gone. All of those credentials are immediately not available to me anymore. So um, all of that said, we also need to ensure that organizations are reaching compliance and security obligations, and they need to know who, what, where, and when of every single interaction. Everything done in the SAS control plane is logged, including admin user access and role modifications. We also log and provide visibility to what was actually done on the resources that were accessed, including full logging on all queries run on your data sources. For SSH, we provide a complete replay of what was done on the resource. You not only get access visibility, but you get to see exactly what commands were run, when and by who. This can really level up your troubleshooting and investigative capabilities. If you have Windows infrastructure, which many of us still do, you can log in here and get pixel perfect replays of RDP sessions and full video rendering of the desktop session is provided. We get play here so you can actually see that. We also provide Few, full cube cuddle logging to show you exactly what was done on your clusters. And similar to SSH, we also provide full replays of pod exec sessions. And since StrongDM is a protocol and identity access aware proxy, you have deep visibility in what was done on all of your onboarded resources. And we can also stream all of this logging to your SIM of choice. You can be confident knowing exactly what access employees have and total visibility in, into who they are and what they're doing. And that is all for my demo. Um, at this point, I'm happy to answer uh, any questions. Oh man, thank you, Michael, for that awesome presentation. I love the, the people first approach. Uh, and I understand that you have brought Greg Baldwin on with you now. So hi to you as well, Greg. Hello. All right, well, we've already got lots of great questions coming in, but before we jump into this discussion, I know that you guys actually had a question for our audience. Um, so you were wondering uh, if anyone out there has seen teams address a lack of access to critical systems um, and, and how they've uh, seen that addressed. So the three options on the screen here are maintained backdoor access, shared credentials, or embrace shadow IT. Uh, Michael and Greg, anything you want to add or, or kind of uh, um, flesh out with that a little bit more? I mean, I feel like that's that, that pretty much sums it up and I'm seeing, you know, <laughs> Uh, shared credentials is is you know is kind of winning with with 52 percent now and I and that's probably one of the most you know dangerous practices and and one that you know we're trying to address with our platform. Hmm. Greg, what did you? Well, add there to that? you go. I, I would say shadow IT is the most uh, most common. I, I can say in previous roles I've been guilty of uh, probably all three of them. So it's not a common <laughs> practice. <laughs> yeah, I think I, that, I might that still often... have some backdoor access to some systems from back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a fun realization. 
Uh, well, luckily, it looks like we've only we've got a, the lowest percentage embracing uh, shadow IT. Um, so that's interesting. Okay, well, I, thank you so much for everyone who answered the poll. I'm going to move along very quickly to our next poll question while we jump into some Q&A. So again, uh, this is we're, we're asking here what additional information you would like about the Strong DM solution. So please do take a minute. Uh, to fill that out. And while you're doing that, uh, we are going to jump into some questions. You guys ready to rock here? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Locked and loaded. Okay, so let's start with this one by Theodos Wright. It seems Strong DM allows an organization to roll out access to sessions on personal systems. Is that so? I, I, I would, I would say, yeah. Sorry, Greg. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I would say. I mean, I, I, I mean, how would you define personal systems? Um, mm. I, it would allow access to you know any any system that's configured you know within the platform. So, um, it, it, so I would have to. I mean, I have to. I would have to ask. You know, see what How are you defining a personal system? It's not allowing access to the uh, workstations. You know, the user workstations. Basically, there's going to be a client running on the user workstation that allows access to all of the configured resources. And I don't know if Greg wants to add anything to that. I, yeah, I would, add, I, would, I would want to ask follow-up questions to this, uh, this <laughs> question. I'm not sure by personal systems. So um, just by nature, it's designed to, you can use a personal system to access your sessions. Um, it might be all your infrastructure, but um, I, would, I would want to know more details. Feel free to reach out to us and we can follow up on that question. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. Okay, uh, how about this one from Patrick? Are there any safeguards, uh, and he suggests maybe lock blockchain, that can guarantee the logs haven't been tampered with? On the back end, there's, um, with an NDA, we could give you more information about how we handle it. But, but yes, there are safeguards in place that handle our access control, and then your specific, um, your specific logs on on their send, it's going to just be a question of, um, of local um, local implementation of uh, protections. Okay. Um, so then here, let's let's answer this one from Eric. How does it work on remote recording? Um, maintain. He says maintain how long a recording? Maybe how long is the recording maintained? From a from a how long we keep the logs, strong DM mm -hmm. will hold on to them for up to 13 months, but you have the option of not storing them with us at all. You can store them locally, and then you can maintain those for as long as you need and as long as recordings. If you had a, um, if you had, for example, a, a SSH session that went eight hours of extreme coding, you're going to get that eight hours of that recording. Uh, but there are going to be session timeouts that are going to um, – it's not going to record indefinitely if the connection is maintained. Um, recordings are are saved at a byte level uh, either from your uh, your logging system or uh, with strong DM, so you can access those either in two places. Uh, you also have the option of uh, encrypting those, uh, storing remotely or locally um, using PKI, uh, and then um, – well, like I said, they'll be available for 13 months with us or, or whatever your storage plan looks like uh, locally. Perfect. Okay. I do want to acknowledge that we are getting lots of high fives on the demo there, Michael. Lots of lots of compliments on the, on the interactivity and, and the hands-on. So thank you again for putting that together. Uh, okay, here's a good one. I love getting into this because I think a lot of people, and I don't know if you saw the poll that we had at the beginning, there's a lot of people that are just starting this journey and kind of figuring out uh, what this means to them. So, you know, as they start to uh, make these decisions, it's, it's great to know uh, about sort of the uniques. Um, so let's talk about Strong DM. Uh, we have someone wondering, what, what do you think makes Strong DM stand out? What makes you unique? I would argue our our uniqueness comes from our uh, scale of resources that you can connect to mm -hmm. and our implementation of your connectivity. Uh, we keep the uh, credentials at the gateway level. Uh, your users never see a credential. Uh, they never have to keep track of keys. They never have to keep track of 
uh, that implementation, they need uh, their IDP uh, with their MFA connectivity, and then they are able to access these resources um, with a very lightweight client. Um, we also have a very lightweight implementation. The amount of resources you need to run StrongDM are are very, very minimal for um, very large sessions, and I know they're um, that sets us apart in your uh, overall um, total costs. Yeah, I think I think I would add to that that the, our our solution is agentless, so you don't need to have any agents running on the on on, on your resources. Um, just the client running on the on the user's workstations, and uh, we have a pretty simplified pricing model as well. That's awesome. Okay, love that, um, Deb. That was a great question. Hopefully that answered that for you. Uh, okay, how about this one from Patrick now, with regard to initial configuration, how do you determine which role should be created? Uh, he's wondering actually if there's an audit of the existing environment to help them make this determination. That's, uh, that's been something I've worked with customers with quite a bit. Um, it's a matter of rolling out, for example, with your skin connectivity to your, your IDP. Um, the questions are going to be, for example, your filtering and how you're, you're naming a scheme of your resources and what's going to be involved. There, there are a number of different approaches that we can take to help you help you sort that out. Um, usually when people come to this, they have a, a general idea of, okay, well, I know my, my DevOps guys have access to this, and here's the production guys who should have access to this. And because you have the ability to attach multiple roles, uh, you can give and take very easily from the users with a, a simple click of a button. Um, allows you to to implement that and, and pull that apart very quickly. Perfect. Okay. Um, wondering here, how is StrongDM deployed on their uh, resources or infrastructure, uh, specifically agent versus agentless? Michael, I've been doing all the talk. All right. <laughs> You've been doing a great job, Greg. Right? Yeah. So, it's, so, so the solution is agentless. It doesn't require any agents on the on the on the resources on the target resources. You'll have a client that runs on uh, on the user's workstation, and you'll need to have uh, a pair of gateways in the in the network where your resources are located that is publicly accessible. Uh, in some cases, we we also will provide a uh, egress only relay. Um, so it, it it really depends a lot on uh, the topology of your network and where your resources are located. But there will be no agents on the resources. Um, uh, at the very minimum, you'll need a, a, you know a pair of gateways that you manage, and you'll need to have the client running on the user workstations. And it takes about awesome. 45 minutes to set all this up in in most cases. Oh, perfect. Okay, that's great. We actually had a question about typical uh, implementation time uh, and setup. So, so 45 minutes is <laughs> the answer to that. That's right. That's right. Le le less than an hour, we like to say. That's perfect. Yeah, that's uh, extremely reasonable. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, now this is interesting because I think obviously we hear lots about zero trust. So uh, we have a question here. What, what does Strong DM do to support zero trust initiatives in the cloud? One of my uh, favorite implementations. Oh, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, go ahead, Greg. Yeah. <laughs> uh, You're both so excited uh, about this one. <laughs> well, one that uh, I very much enjoy. We have the ability uh, to do temporary access uh, control. So, um, Several of my customers, when they start their day, um, have zero access to any resources. Uh, at, the, at the start of their day, they go in and they make a request from um, a prevailing set of managers who approve a request. And uh, very commonly, it's through either like a Slack bot or a Teams bot. But you can also use, um, you can also use, for example, um, a, our PagerDuty integration that. Uh, if you're on call, you don't have access to these resources until you uh, become on call, and then you only have it through um, like the request of a ticket that gives it to you as you need it. And those uh, those in combination with uh, multi-factor authentication uh, makes you have to um, have to prove who you are, uh, when you are, and where you are, um, versus giving you access uh, prevailing. Uh, even when you're not logged in. Uh, 
Perfect. Okay. Well, I, I wish we could keep going with this because we're getting great questions and, and you guys are fascinating to chat with. Um, but we are running low on time. So to wrap it up, I have one last question for you. Uh, what is the best way for someone to get started with StrongDM, get more information? Where do you recommend that they jump in from? Well, we offer you know, a two-week free trial of the product so you can get hands-on. And as I mentioned, you know, it really, really uh, doesn't take long to set up. Uh, and we'd also be happy to do a personal demo for you. So um, I think we had some links to share to, um, you know, but you can find that on the, you can schedule the personal demo. Uh, you can download the free trial at our uh, website, which is strongdm.com. Yeah, there's that, um, uh, in the handout section, there's actually an, an infrastructure access platform review as well. So that's, that's a great resource. If you haven't already checked that out, head on over there and, uh, and download that. Well, thank you guys, uh, Michael and Greg, both of you, for coming to join us. This has just been awesome. Thank you, Jeff. It's thank been a pleasure. You.